Watch the Narcissus Facade in Action, Part 1. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Certain narcissists operate with a facade. Those are mid-range, greater, and the ultra. There are different types of facade that the narcissist can use. The facade is what is shown to third parties. So, for example... The narcissist will devalue the intimate partner primary source behind closed doors because the facade is not applicable. Nobody's seeing the behaviours. When that narcissist goes out for dinner with the intimate partner primary source, they may well operate a facade with regard to other people that are around them so that they are seen to be a decent law-abiding and kind individual, so long as the facade can remain in place. Some facades are better than others. The lower mid-range narcissist facade is like a flickering strip light coming on and off, often allowing glimpses behind it. The facade of the middle mid-ranger is often, be they A or B, is invariably linked to them being viewed as a decent person, a kind person, perhaps somebody who is a pillar of the community, a church-going, law-abiding individual who wouldn't harm anybody else and often can't understand why people have a difficulty either with them per se or with their acts of charity and good-naturedness. Those facades, however, can often be fractured, that there can be glimpses behind it. Because where there is a tension between the need to assert control and the maintenance of the facade, ultimately, the need to assert control will always win out. Often, the narcissism is able to cater to both. It can achieve control whilst maintaining the facade. But sometimes, it's not always able to do that, resulting in the facade fracturing or cracking. Upper-mid-range narcissists tend to operate with the facade of being a decent but capable individual, that they trade on their superiority, that they get away with things because they are charismatic, that they're viewed as capable, that they're viewed as superior. So, for instance, you might get a hospital surgeon who acts in a particularly cocky way and his facade is of, well, well, I can do all of this because ultimately I am seen as the best, aren't I? And that facade of a cocky superior being is supported by actual ability but that amiable cockiness can sometimes be fractured as a consequence of a threat to control the purpose of the facade is to allow it to assert control over the various third parties but also to triangulate invariably the intimate partner primary source or another appliance in the fuel matrix who is being devalued. So it might be utilised as against a friend or a neighbour or as against uh, a colleague so that the facade of being a helpful and constructive worker is thrown in the face of a colleague to say what you're suggesting I'm not pulling my weight. Ask all of these people here that work with us. They'll know that I'm first in and last out, that I'm always very helpful, that I'm always asking if I can take extra work etc. And that facade of being a helpful colleague and employee is thrown in the face of the person who's being devalued. The facade is a residual benefit. And therefore, invariably, non-intimate secondary sources and non-intimate tertiary sources can provide the facade for a narcissist. There'll be some instances where the intimate partner primary source forms part of that facade as against somebody else, often the former intimate partner, primary source. There are numerous narcissists that operate facades, and it is a residual benefit. This facade can be demonstrated in the way that the narcissist interacts with other people. It can also be seen in the way that they might write about themselves, the way that they might speak about themselves the way that they might speak about themselves to other people, or, for instance, in the creation of a video about their behaviours and activities. You'll be familiar 
with earlier work about those narcissists that go running to social media to plead their case, that when things don't go their way and they're unable to assert control directly, they will utilise Facebook or Instagram or YouTube to create something bleating about how hard done to they've been, how good a person they are, in order to indirectly control the person that has offended their need for control. They basically play the facade card. Thus, if you are a person who is good and decent, that helps other people, you don't need to sing from the rooftops about it. Indeed, as I've explained on many occasions, genuinely empathic individuals don't shout about what they've achieved. They just do it. They don't have to advertise their goodness. You will have seen many instances on social media of individuals who always have to record their act of giving out food to the homeless and then put it out there to get clicks and likes. That doesn't necessarily mean that individual is a narcissist. They're just behaving in a narcissistic way because their intentions aren't genuine. They are only doing it to gain clicks and to gain likes. If they genuinely cared about homeless people, they would just give out the food without drawing attention to the fact of what they are doing. But it's commonly the behaviour of a narcissist, because as you know, the narcissist has no genuine emotional empathy for those around them, and only does these things and films them and talks about them and posts them in order to utilise a facade of, look how kind and caring I am, so that people are controlled by that, and that they provide fuel by way of response. I'm going to provide you with an example of a mid-range narcissist who is called AJ, and he clearly utilises a facade which is put out there for a variety of different reasons. He, like many other mid-range narcissists, rather than deal with the matter quietly and behind the scenes, has decided that it's appropriate for him to create a monologue on a video and post it to the internet. That in itself is an indicator of what this individual is. But I'm now going to provide you with an excerpt of his video, and then I'll break it down for you. Here comes the first excerpt. Good evening, everybody. AJ Bird, Bird of Prairie Creations. Um, as most of you know, uh, all I do anymore is um, pray for people, work, and uh, dedicate my life to Christ and helping people. Um, give away cars and things like that. Uh, the Lord's blessed me enough to do that, told me to give away cars. Um, but I've been having some issues uh, with uh, the DEP uh, well, in the past few years um, due to the neighbor calling for no reason. Um, I don't want to bother him. It's a little bit of noise. I think it bothers him a little bit. Um, but this is about Brent Mallory. Um, a few months ago, he pulls up out back by himself, and, and he's weed eating across the street. And I step out, and I'm always nice, and you know, even though you know, I forgive him uh, for calling a DEP and, and trying to get me to buy his house or something, because nobody would buy his house. They hardly bought his property across the street. Um, but you know, he's trying to manipulate the situation, like every everybody does that doesn't know Christ or they don't understand uh, how Christ works and how favor works. And and uh, so today. Um, the reason I'm making this video is number one to document it. Uh, number two to let people know that just because you you follow Christ doesn't mean you can't stand up for yourself. Doesn't mean you can't uh, call people out on the truth and and let them know that you know what they're doing and 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 that, that it's not going to happen you just, because you know Christ and and vengeance is His and and uh, so today uh, the other, last a few months ago he pulls up out back and he's all nervous and he's he's being nice but he's nervous you can tell he's trying to hide something or. Or, you know, just know that, that scared feeling that people get or, or just just sketchy, edgy, you know, shaking, whatever. Like, he, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know if he does drugs and he smokes pot or something. But anyway, um, so today I'm walking my dog. At the time, I didn't have a dog. And I adopted a dog and, and uh, it had been hit by a car and ran off and been hit by a car. It's just now getting to healthy um, to where it can kick its legs back when it pees. And, it, and uh, so... Him and his buddy are pulling up, and they see my dog um, kicking. I guess they probably saw it peeing or whatever uh, in the neighbor's—well, not even the neighbor's yard. It was all off, right off the edge of the road, 
um, and in a, a vacant lot. But he pulls up, knowing that I don't have anything in my hands except the leash. And uh, he says, did you pick up the poop? And um, <laughs> I said, well, he didn't poop, but, you know, I was nice. And, and, uh, and he, he, said something, he said something else. He said, well, how's the dog's temperament? And I said, well, like you see, he's just standing there looking at you. He's not trying to jump on the car. He's not running after the car. He's standing there just like I told him to do. And, and there you have the video footage. You see the facade in action? Do you see the various manipulations? Well, let's find out if you did. This individual commences, Good evening, everybody. It's AJ, makes reference to his company. As most of you know, all I do anymore is um, pray for people, work, and dedicate my life to Christ and helping people. If you were really that humble, there'd be no need for him to mention all of that but he feels the necessity to do so, to blow his own trumpet, as part of the manifestation of his facade to whoever happens to be watching the video. He continues by explaining giveaway cars and things like that. The Lord has bust me enough to do that, told me to give away cars. Thus, we have an individual that is utilising a facade of goodness and that is triangulating the audience with... God and with Christ, utilization of a spiritual being for the purpose of assertion of control and drawing fuel, a holy narcissist as well. He continues, um, but I've been having some issues with the DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, in the past few years due to the neighbour calling for no reason. Dismissiveness, he just rejects the suggestion that there's a valid complaint about him, but the complaint, of course, is a threat to his need for control. I don't want to bother him. It's a little bit of noise. I think it bothers him a little bit. Minimisation. Um, but this is about Brent Mallory, names the individual. A few months ago, he pulls out back by himself and he's weeding across the street, bringing up the past. I step out and I'm always nice. Of course you are. Facade management. You know, even though I forgive him for calling the DEP. Oh, blessed we are for St. AJ forgiving him for calling the DEP, and trying to get me to buy his house or something, because nobody will buy his house. They hardly bought his property across the street. He's trying to manipulate the situation, projection, like everybody does that doesn't know Christ, holier than thou, or they don't understand how Christ works or how favour works. So, today, the reason I'm making this video is number one, to document it, number two, to let people know that just because you follow Christ, it doesn't mean that you can't stand up for yourself. It doesn't mean you can't call people out on the truth and let them know that you know what they're doing and that it's not going to happen because you know Christ and vengeance is his. Triangulation. And once again, notice, his narcissism causes him to believe that he's on some quest for the truth and that he's standing up for what is right. What he doesn't realise is that those are the reasons that his narcissism has adopted in order to persuade him to assert control over Brent, to nullify the threat to control that Brent represents, and to draw fuel by way of people's responses to this particular video. If he has a problem with Brent, go and talk to Brent about it. Don't go running off and making a video whereby you're seeking to persuade other people of your goodness and to utilise your facade. This clearly is an indirect assertion of control over Brent by failing to address the matter directly with him and instead, like the cowardly mid, or mid, the cowardly mid ranger behaves, seeking to assert control indirectly by basically complaining about it to other people whilst asserting his own credentials as being a good person. So today, a few months ago, he, Brent, pulls up out back and he's all nervous. He's being nice, but he's nervous. You could tell he's trying to hide something. Or, you know, just that scared feeling that people get, or just sketchy, edgy, shaken. I don't even know if he does drugs or he smokes pot or something. He's smearing Brent by suggesting that he's a ne'er-do-well, that he's up to no good. Anyway, so today I'm walking my dog. Notice how he leaps around in his narrative 
One minute he's talking about something a few months ago, then he's jumping to what's going on with regard to today. This demonstrates vagueness on his part with regard to not really having a true recollection of what has occurred, but also the way that he deems that it is appropriate to bring up the past in order to smear Brent. Anyway, so today I'm walking my dog. At the time, referring to a previous encounter with his neighbour, I didn't have a dog. I adopted a dog, see how good I am. It had been hit by a car. It ran off and had been hit by a car and is now just getting to healthy, where it can kick its legs back when it pees. Irrelevant, but he fills in with this self-indulgent monologue. So him and his buddy, they're pulling up and they see my dog kicking. I guess they probably saw it peeing or whatever in the neighbours. Well, not even the neighbour's yard, it was off the edge of the road, a vacant lot. But he pulls up, knowing that I didn't have anything in my hands except the leash, and he says, did you pick up the poop? Threat to control. And I said, well, he didn't poop. But you know I was nice. Of course, of course you are, AJ. That's your default position. And he said something else. He said, well, how's the dog's temperament? I said, well, as you can see, he's just running there looking at you standing there looking at you. He's not trying to jump on the car. He's not running after the car. He's standing there just like I told him to do. Thus, in that first part, we have an individual who is looking to smear Brent that is engaged in the extension of his own facade, talking about how he's basically got Christ on his side and how he's a good person and that Brent is clearly a near-do-well. And, of course, the presence of Brent is causing a problem for him amounting to a threat to control, causing him to seek to take steps against this by asserting control indirectly over him through this video. Join me in part two as we see what else AJ has to say. <laughs> 